so on this slide we talk about sheaves of rings so basically we want to define what is a ringed space so we start with the obvious thing so if f is a sheaf then f of u should be commutative ring yeah where u is a open set of some topological space x so we fix a topological space x define a sheaf f on it u is a open set in x then f of u is a commutative ring okay again the standard diagram v is open set in x but v is a subset of u and we have a map in the opposite direction here and this is a homomorphism of rings yeah f of u is a ring f of v is a ring so a ringed space is a topological space x equipped with a sheaf of rings so this ringed space is nothing but a topological space x we have a topological space x and this space x has sheaf of rings on it yeah and this sheaf is called the structure sheaf of x So this is called the structure sheaf of X. And you denote it by O of X. Yeah, it is but natural that now we will talk about the stocks. So the stocks are local rings. Yeah, so the in the sheaves of rings, the stocks are local rings. So local ring means that it has only one maximal ideal. So you have local ring at each point of the topological space X so for each X in X now uh, we talked about local ring has precisely one unique maximal ideal and that is what we write as MX so this is the unique maximal ideal of the local ring there is only one ideal now since we have a local ring and we have a maximal ideal we want to talk about a field yeah, so you do this you get a field and you call this field as residue field of X at X you denote it by K of X yeah so let me write this down you take the local ring and you modulo it out by the maximal ideal okay now we talk about morphism of ringed topological space so uh, we obviously have two spaces x and y and both of them have structure sheaves on it so you have space x with structure sheaf o of x and you have space y with structure sheaf o of y yeah so the first map f is just a continuous map between two topological spaces from x to y so this is a continuous map
and f hash is nothing but a morphism of sheaves of rings. So notice the direction of the arrow. So both of these uh, rings are defined on y. Yeah. So we have this is obviously on y. This is also a sheaf on y. Yeah. We have discussed this before that how to construct this sheaf on y via this topological map uh, via the continuous map f. Yeah. So just for recap, let us recall this. So you have space X, you have space Y, you have a map F between them. So space X, space Y, you fix a set U in Y. There is a set F inverse U in X. And you know the sheaf O of X. So O of X defined of F inverse of U is F star. Yeah, so when you talk about F star O of X, you're basically de uh, defining O of X on F inverse of U. Yeah, so uh, we will immediately see in this slide itself that what it means in practice. Yeah, so just hold on for five more minutes. Now this morphism of ringed space also satisfies one extra condition. That is, we are taking special care of the map between the stocks. So say there is this stock y comma f of x. Yeah, and uh, there is this map from, we have this map o of x comma x. So, so this is a local homomorphism. So the maximal ideal here gets mapped to the maximal ideal here. Okay, now let us talk about this morphism of ringed spaces in more tangible and understandable terms. So you have this continuous map F between topological spaces X and Y. You take a G element of the O of Y, yeah? G is some function in the ring. Yeah, then GF belongs to F star of O of Y. Sorry, F star of O of X. Now this is important. So G F belongs to F star of O of X. So this basically should make your life really easy. At least it made my life understanding it really easy. Now let us define it on open set U. Yeah, on stocks it is very clear, you know, you just talk about maximal ideals. So an open set, we have O, Y of U, and then I will talk about, so this F star is redundant, I will just take it out. I'm just writing it so that it is clear that where it came from. So we are talk, talking about O, X of F inverse of U. Yeah, so this F star you should delete because once I've written OX of F inverse U, uh, that then this F star becomes redundant. Yeah. So this is precisely, you take G and you map it to GF. Yeah, so you take every element of OY of U. Yeah, OY of U is nothing but a ring. So you take its elements, multiply with this map F, which maps X to Y, and that is it. That is what F hash is all about. So you're basically just taking the functions on O of Y and multiplying them by the map F. This should just satisfy, I mean, once you multiply, it should satisfy this restriction condition.
So this is just standard. Once once I once you see it, you'll say, "Oh, that is obvious." A map in the opposite direction. Then we talk about O X. So these are the restriction maps which we have drawn. Yeah, because V is contained in U, we have a contravariant maps, and these are the restriction maps. And the idea is that this square should commute. Yeah, so when you multiply it by F, this square should commute.